Welcome to Telly Talks, where we talk about life, growth, relationships, and all things in between. I have my co-host, OGZ, Too Funny in the building. And it. today we have a very special guest. Yes, Lord. He is the CEO of Cannabis himself, owner of Pineapple Express. Sean Cradle. Thanks for having me, guys. Business Thanks for man. coming. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you okay, guys. Okay, so for the people that live under a rock pretty much and don't know what Pineapple Express mm -hmm. is, tell us about your journey and how you got to where you are today. Uh, so I'll give you the quick 35,000, you know, <laughs> foot view. So Pineapple Inc. is a public entity. It's a publicly traded company that owns the assets Pineapple Express. So that's your legal cannabis uh, dispensaries, brick and mortar delivery all throughout California. And uh, we're number three in, uh, in uh, delivery right now in all of L.A., uh, great Los Angeles area. Um, we open our right two blocks away from you guys, right down the street, mm -hmm. Hollywood and Vine, yes. our flagship dispensary. Great um, location, by the way. dispensary. Crazy, crazy uh, great location. And um, and the partners involved are some heavy hitters. Two Chains, shout out to Two Chains. Hey, two Chains. Titty Two Boy, that's my favorite yes. rapper. Titty yes. Two Boy. By the way, <laughs> Direct, Titty Two Boy, Two Chains. <laughs> Direct investor with us there. Also Ray J, uh, shout out to Ray J and uh, Princess Love as well. Uh, Larry Flint before he passed away. Uh, so uh, we got a lot of cool, you know, uh, heavy hitters under that umbrella right there. And then also Super. we own um, Pineapple Wellness. So that's a nationwide uh, delivery of health and beauty, CBD only products, cat dog treats, beard oils, facial creams, sex lube, all kind of cool sex stuff. Sex lube? Like what? some weed sex lube? It's pineapple no, but it's CBD. extract. CBD it's sex CBD. lube. So it's pineapplewellness.com and they can get that anywhere. And we shipped to Puerto Rico as well. Pineapple wow. sex lube, guys. Yeah. CBD, so CBD I, infused. You know, you know, cannabis is a, is a plant-based medicine. So Absolutely. I like to say I medicate while I penetrate. I, know I that's fucking right. love it. See? God damn Bars. it. See? Bars. I like to Medicaid and penetrate. penetrate. I love God it. Damn. Love to hear it. So, so that's the whole umbrella there. And then we also own our in-house brand is actually THC because we actually, believe it or not, we own the trademark THC. Oh, wow. So, wow. yes. So if you don't believe me, go ahead and look that up because uh, shout out to Drake, homie. But he tried to trademark it two years ago, got denied because nobody knew we owned it. Wow. So we got a nice article right up in Market Watch, put our ticker symbol. So it got our stock price up a little bit. So that was I cool. Know, that's so, right. so yeah, so that's And what I we love do. that you're a black man that owns a cannabis company. Black and Puerto Rican. I love black it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Representing for both black and brown. Love you know, it. Minority. Coast coast. Minority yes. owned cannabis that is doing its thing. Well, actually, guys, you know, the the, the fun fact is, um, you know, I, we are publicly traded. I am the youngest black and brown CEO of a publicly traded cannabis company really? in the country that. today. That's, That's big. Amazing. That's something I got to cut my hands yes. to for that. Give it up. I appreciate it. it. Got it. It got me in Fortune twice in 2019. So that was a good, nice. you know, good, good, good launching pad to where we you know our journey to where we are now. Okay. So we That's started amazing. as delivery and then we started charting the map. And now we're going to be doing uh, franchising models. You go and see a Pineapple Express in New York. Puerto Rico, oh, cannabis wow. lounges in Barcelona. I just got back from there. Ooh, so, um, yeah, lounge wow. in Barcelona. That's let's, a vibe. Let's yeah. let's let's take this all back before all the cannabis, before all all the Pineapple Express. Who was who was Mr. Cradle? Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll try to keep this brief as well. So originally uh, from Connecticut, shout out to Northeast. Um, sing, uh, raised by a single black mom in the '80s. So give it up to my moms for sure. Yes. Um, and, uh, I went to the Marine Corps. So I served, uh, during not before, during 9-11. So I was in 99 to 03. Okay. So that's primarily where my journey started. I hadn't smoked, you know, you know weed was smoked, in, right, in your body. Right, never right. in my life. No, wow. No. Okay. So, um, and I was one of those dudes that like, you know, the dare program really worked. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I graduated <laughs> so, dare. It didn't work for me. Yeah. I was but like, I you know, it's, I was pretty much black and white. So I was like, if it's illegal, I'm not messing with it because, you know, I had, uh, other, uh, examples of not what not to do right. so i was always like a, a nerdy kid never like hung out or whatever i was always um you know rather build legos and all this stuff like that so i was very serious early on um first job at 11 years old haven't been unemployed since wow, wow. and uh just been just been going you know going, going hard in. and um and it you know it, it culminated to going to marine corps after that i moved to miami I lived there uh, still now, 14 years, uh, and Puerto Rico the last six years. So I was going back and forth before I came over here. Um, so there, I started a number of what the top, like number eight, top ten fitness companies. I'm a fitness trainer and uh, nutritionist. 
out of Miami. So that was Semper Fi Fitness. Then I was a real estate broker, a uh, college professor. All. So shout out to Barry University, taught leadership and entrepreneurship there. Oh, uh, taught in the fitness school. So I've certified probably almost 600 tra personal trainers across the country. Wow. wow. Uh, so, you know, I've done acting modeling. I got into that as well. Wow. Um, so yeah, I've done, He's done everything. quite a few things, you know, but I always been that way. I had eight jobs before I was 18. So wait, so, what made you get into cannabis? So that's uh, so that's one thing. So that was something, again, to this day, a lot of people, especially Marine Corps buddies, like, what? Like, how, how, how? Right. How, how Where happen? was the conversion? Uh, the founder. The founder of Pineapple, a uh, Persian dude, he he had sort of like a, the, the stock was kind of like not in shambles, but it was just sitting there not doing anything. And he's like, he actually started buying up assets. He's an inventor, started buying up assets, bought the THC, um, uh, trademark, uh, got the trademark for Pineapple Express as well. Um, and uh, also uh, uh, got the dot com. So he started building these things. He's like, you know, he was a pioneer in cannabis way back uh, before I even knew what was going on. So he was like, you know, I met him. He was in Miami. So okay. I met him out one time and he was like, you know, I think I want to keep you in mind. I think uh, this would be if I do this right. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not moving to California, first of all. And it's cannabis. I'm not sure. I don't mess with that stuff. Right, you know, but right. no, at the time I did. You, you did. I did. You know, after I moved to Miami. So you was like, yeah, let me smoke a little bit. <laughs> I try like, This you is know, after the Marine Corps, though. This is after the Marine Corps. In my 20s, I did try it about three times. Okay. Uh, but then I moved to Miami when I was 29. And then I was, you know, I was like, this is helping me, quite frankly, help me go to sleep. And not, um, you know, I suffer from minor, minor PTSD from the, the things I've seen and done in the Marine Corps. Um, but uh, it was always hard to sleep. So my doctor was actually like, I don't want you to take these you know, pills. You're not, you're really not yeah. bad off at all. You just need to get some sleep. So I started trying to smoke cannabis at night. And um, I mean, very small, like one joint would last me like a that week, shit you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, but I would sleep, I would yeah. sleep. So, so that's how I was like, you know, this is something, you know, pretty good. I started thinking about it a little bit more. And especially understanding that I have an opportunity to help black and brown if I can be a champion for us and take on this. Yes. And bringing, uh, you know, a cannabis company from this side of legalization to the other side, the good side. Um, and I thought that was, you know, a pretty great opportunity to do that. So Absolutely. I also have four master's degrees. So he was like, you know, all these check marks. He's like, you really this should be um, this should be done by a, a, a black and brown person. And the first thing they do to us. Right. I'm not, I'm not saying who they is, but your character starts like, this guy's in charge. Okay, what's his background? You right. know, like, where's he come from? Yeah. I'm Absolutely. Obama clean. I don't have no, I've never been arrested. Nothing like that. Yeah. <laughs> no detention right. in high school, clean nothing. Background. So, you know, yeah. with that and the military and the degrees and, and, and being a professor, it was really nothing. It was, it was, it was, I felt good doing it, you know? So I did. And I, I got carte blanche to uh, basically restructure the entire organization all over again and start kind of almost from scratch. And then here we are. Started with delivery. Um, that built to, again, um, brick and mortars and online presence. And here we are. That is amazing. Like That's to just be suck. able to do all the things at once. No facts. And, and, and I kind of like looked on your gram and got all my facts straight and stuff. She you also know. skydive. I'm a skydiver. Yeah, I've that's like on my bucket list to skydive. So I've never done it. It's something I want to do. Um, he's scared of heights, so that. I don't think he'll ever do it. I'm scared of it. But <laughs> that's all it is. I'm he won't even like it. look like we had a penthouse in downtown LA. <laughs> and what, what floor were we were? Twenty four. No, I was at like the thirty third floor. Bro. Okay, thirty third, thirty third floor. floor. And he would be the at the top balcony. Thirty four. He would be at the balcony smoking, and he'd be like, "Like here's a ledge over yeah, there," I would and he'd turn be my like, back to it. "You're going too close." I'm like, "What?" Yeah. Like there's a whole like barrier nah, right here, nah. and he's just not doing it. And I'm like. I love, you know, I love being up high. I love like, you know, I love planes, jets, you name it. I love all that stuff. Like I, I'm a certified scuba diver. I'm a diver so too, yeah. I love really? scuba diving. Yeah. I love, like, I love all that adrenaline You're some rush. adrenaline junkies, boy. But it's, it's, Quite frankly, I think, honestly, you have more instances of getting hurt scuba diving than skydiving. I agree. Um, just like aquatic life, you run out of air, you get the bends, mm -hmm. you know, how it is like that honestly is a lot. I mean, 
falling is easy. It's the landing part. That's that's, yeah. that's all it is. The <laughs> landing true. part. It's the but landing. But it's like part. when you fall, is it like a roller coaster feeling, no, it's or not. is it like what a type lot of, people of feeling? Think that um, because you you know when you're in a roller coaster, you're in a you're in a vehicle. Right. So same thing if you go over a hill in a car, you're with this car. So right. this is you. You don't yeah. feel that. Uh, you know, yeah. you don't so feel is, you're is it, it, it's not like a feeling of your stomach's out of no, your. Not at all. It's do you feel like a numbness? If nope. it's just like a freeing? No, freeing you, just, you just gotta go do it so you can know how it feels. How is oh, breathing? Shit. Is it like I get a year's worth of oxygen every time I skydive? And just, <laughs> no, it's not. It's You're not. just you inhaling all the oxygen no, you need not. for That's the year. That's a great question, though. That's I never been asked. See it. I always That's see a really it. great question. No, it's not. Breathing's I mean, easy on. It's fine. Yeah. It doesn't make you like drool because I would feel like yes. when I do roller coaster, I mean, not roller coasters, when I do uh, motorcycles, yes. I'm like smiling and just drool it's just like, like eh. But I wear a helmet. Uh, so, you know, I'm able to breathe freely and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean, of course, if you, you know, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, if you're just like, I just feel like it would be such a happy moment that you just have no choice yeah, but to smile what I, what and you're just is, like, eh. It's like, it's like um, you saying you would be scared of it. You, Honestly, you were, you're scared. You stop being scared as soon as you jump, because then you're not. There's it's nothing. It's like it's done. You're there. Uh, it's, you're in the I moment. Feel like I'm, it would just take you over. The experience itself would just be like, okay, I get it. Like, I do this stuff. You know, I like to drive fast and all these things because it's, it's something that um, it's very like mundane after the Marine Corps. So I started getting into all that stuff mm -hmm. and bungee jumping and cliff diving and all this stuff just to kind of give me that little. Uh, you know? Yeah. And um, when I first got, I think it was in Mexico, it was all wrong. It was everything was saying, like, I should not do this. Um, the plane was on empty and the guy oh, was like, the, it looks like the guy put the put the plane together by himself, oh, <laughs> like a soapbox derby plane or something like that. And, uh, oh, I and then the, the as we're going up, I, I even tell the guy, I'm like, I look on the gauge and I'm like, well, I mean, I can read this. It looks like it's empty. And the guy was like, nah, it's no problem. I'm like, what? and he had his arm out the window and he's flying the plane. I'm like, and then oh the guy, oh the guy no. jumping with me had uh, flip flops on. He was, he was passed out. He was asleep. Oh I'm like, my goodness. Something is telling me I shouldn't do this. He oh was sleeping before he jumped God. off the plane. And he jumped with flip flops and he still had him when we came what? to What? Wow. Some people can't even fight with flip flops on. They're going to lose at least one of them. Things. No, you do not want to fight with flip flops. That, <laughs> that is, is not a good thing insane. Do, like, I would have just been like, oh, no, absolutely not. Like, I'm such a. Uh, I have really bad anxiety. So I feel like if I see anything that goes wrong or left, I'd be like, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. Like everything that I personally choose to do, I want like a medical staff or some type of like research behind it. Yeah. You know, um, me and my spouse did ayahuasca and I was like, we're not just going to the jungle to just do ayahuasca. You know what I'm saying? We're going to a medical facility that has doctors, shamans, yeah. everything that yeah. can make sure we're taken care of and we're good if something does happen. How was it? It was amazing. Was it? It the, was amazing. Did you, I was just talking about this earlier. Did you have to, um, uh, like there's certain levels to it. So like somebody was telling me, well, you can kind of do a quick way, but if you really, really want to do it, you got to eat a certain way for yes. like a week. Yeah. So that's what, like and I went to a facility. That's like two shout weeks out, off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this. shout out to Rhythmia. I went to a facility that um, pretty much had medical staff, uh, 12 shamans. We had multiple shamans there. Um, you know, we were on this strict 12. vegan. Yes, we were on a strict vegan diet that we only ate from 7 a.m. to 2.30, two meals. No alcohol. Vegan, no alcohol, nothing but water, beet juice, and green juice. For We were there for a week. We did it for four days straight. Yeah. So and we took dosages. So you're it was like a shot. Smoke weed before that, we didn't so. do anything. Yeah. You're not yeah so smoke. we took like shot glasses every 30 minutes and then the, the shaman would dictate. Of the DMT? Yes. Of the, of of the ayahuasca. ayahuasca. And um, the shaman would dictate how you feel. Like if you're seeing things, you know, he would talk to you before the next dosage is given. Oh, to so you like handholded do the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So that's okay. why I said I wanted to go to a facility that can help us but what like micro dose. Like? What, was it like, oh, it was uh, beautiful. Like there was a, a pool there. There was no TV. So it's very like strictly ayahuasca. It was a resort. Uh, it was in Costa Rica. Beautiful resort. Um, uh, it was, it's owned by um, Powell, Costa Gerald. Rica. It was in. What side? Oh, Jesus. It was it by the mountains. I, I would have. I'll tell you as Liberia, soon as Tamarindo, Liberia, Liberia, Liberia. So you flew into uh, Liberia. Yes. Yeah. yes. Costa Rica is dope. Shout yeah, out it's to Costa Rica. a beautiful, beautiful facility. Uh, it was like you're on a resort, 
with no TV, but the entire resort. Like I thought I was going like to go there. It's like a rehab center for like yes. ayahuasca. Literally, <laughs> literally. Like <laughs> I thought much. I was going to go there to take care of my man, but yeah. I ended up like, okay, after 2.30, there's nothing to do. There's no TV. There's literally nothing to do but ayahuasca until seven o'clock in the morning till breakfast. So you're like, yeah, okay, here I am doing do nothing. It. I might as well do it because everyone's in this room doing ayahuasca. So yeah. I ended up doing it and the, my experience was beautiful. Like I saw things that I felt, I even got a tattoo following like that represented my journey. I lost people in my life. Uh, their spirits came up. So it was more so like a forgiveness wow. for me to like, oh, I didn't make it to your funeral, you know, because there was multiple deaths. Wow. Back to back. Oh, talking about and it was, it was, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. I saw, you know, I had a segment with my brother. I had a segment with Shout my spouse. Out, yes. I had, it was just like <laughs> things that were going life. on in my life. I saw Polaroids of my life, like bash, like, like Polaroids of my entire That's life. So cool. And it was, it was just a beautiful journey that, you know, there were moments that were hard for me to like experience, right. but I felt like I needed to experience it to like get past those pivotal moments in sometimes my life. you got to go through it to get to it absolutely so my uncle absolutely said. Yeah, pretty much. and it just helped me let go of a lot of things that were like heavy on my shoulders yeah. that i felt that like i put a lot of responsibility on myself so i feel that like when i can't accomplish something that i'm responsible for i like it's like it, it's like a burden to me mm -hmm. you know and um a lot of those burdens after ayahuasca i let go so it was, it was like a relief wow. of like. So you think like you're like, you just leveled up in your life and that's like, you're on a new plane right yeah, now? Yeah, like I, I I feel like. Is it something that wears off after time and then like, okay, that was an experience? You know what? I feel like to me, it was like a learning moment, a teaching moment, a, a, a relief moment. Um, I feel forgiven, like, you know, not like, for example, not attending someone's funeral, right? Because they were just so back to back and I couldn't just go to all these funerals every two weeks. Right. I was losing people. And um, it was just like a, you know, the spirit of that person that passes, like, it's okay. You know, we forgive you. We love what you're doing. Keep keep on pushing. Wow. It was it was very deep, to say wow. the least. And it was just like I said, I I would want everyone that is able and willing and open to do ayahuasca to try it at least one time you know i want my son to do it when he turns 18 he's 16 now just to have like that clearance i want my brother to do it you know it, it was just like i said i wasn't for it in the beginning because i was just like okay what if it just makes me become a a preacher who knows you know what i'm saying like who knows <laughs> or if you open change. door you didn't want to open yeah it exactly it or something. yeah and no I, I'm, I'm like the biggest hippie in the family though yeah he is um so like i feel like i I somewhat started this hippie this hippie journey on everyone's road in the family. Um, even my dad's open to just weed, just looking at weed now. Yeah, you know, my he dad was he was so against like, it. The fuck lettuce. is that? Yeah, like, yeah, get that out of my face. Now, now it's more of a calm, uh, a common thing in our household. Um, just as far as like he's that. not smoking weed now, I'm he not, ain't gotten that far, yeah, yeah, but he's like, oh, steps, it's a business. So, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a business and I, I get it. And it's, and you know, like, yeah. I know why there's business in it now. And yeah. like, and cause he's sister, in the, he was in the military as yeah, well he too. Did 24 oh. years, 28, 27 years in the Navy. Yes. Yeah. 27 in Navy. years in the Navy. Um, so he was very stern, like your background, same yes, way. Yes, sir. No, sir. Smoke weed. None of that all the way up until now. He still hasn't smoked weed, but like. Man, I was a poster child Marine. I, I would, I would take all, like if I found weed in my Marines rooms or whatever, I would like flush down the toilet, yeah. make him watch, make me, make him watch me do it, especially if they were lesser rank. <laughs> And I'm like, the taxpayers are not paying you to get high. <laughs> I, was that, I mean, I wasn't really that guy. Like the guy you see on the billboard, like that was me. I, I lived that it through and through. I, I want to ask something because it's it's just something that I feel like I got to ask. Because, I mean, I'm a big fan of anything cannabis, anything cultured. And Pineapple Express, like, wow, what a name, a cultured name. Yes. Yes. around cannabis mm -hmm. and um what was the idea behind that name what was the story behind pineapple express so a lot of people think it's the movie but it wasn't it, yeah um it, it was more like the it was a, i think at the time it was trademarked it was uh this was before i came aboard um 20 i want to say 2015 okay um and this was due to it was like at that time i think it was like that strain was booming like everyone was smoking was pineapple strain express everyone was talking you know about. sometimes like you have harvests like that, like once a year, and like Bruce Banner is going nuts right now, or Runtz is going Runtz, nuts everywhere, every market. Or whatever. So I think Pineapple Express was that at the time, and he had the the license to do so. And then also, 
again, he was more of a, like a visionary with this, not just because of that. It was um, it's a weather system. You know, for those that don't know that you have a Pineapple Express weather system that hits California, I think like two or three times a year where it's like some weird comes from Hawaii and it was like weird crosswinds and like waters. It starts raining and the water is like going this way, this way or something like that. So that you have that. It's a constellation as well. Star constellation and um Pineapple Express is a star constellation? Yeah, some, wow. Wow. some way out. I don't think it's in our galaxy, though. Not in our or, galaxy. In our, or our solar system, sorry. In our galaxy, yes. Um, so, yeah, it was like all those kind of things. And it's like, this is just kind of cool to put together. I think it was around the time maybe the movie came out. Um, but, you know, we, we just don't really associate, associate with, affiliate, with the movie. Right. Yeah. You know, but right. we don't really, everybody does anyway. So. It's, it's yeah, weed. Weed a- is weed, maybe. That's it's like amazing. a Maui Wowie um, strain. That Plus, we have pineappleexpress.com. So, you know. Do you yeah. guys have the actual Pineapple Express strand in the store? Yeah. We, we, okay. Through some other of our vendors we carry, yeah. Say less. Okay, yeah. so you get some Pineapple Express at Pineapple to. Express, baby. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So, relationships, let's talk about it. Single, Super ready to mingle, in a relationship, married, looking to get married. <laughs> nope, single, and want to stay that way. There's just too much right. work to do. I feel yeah. that. I'm the same married, way. Married to work. I was married, though. Shout out to Katie. Uh, my 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 ex-wife, uh, we're like brother and sister to this day. Never had a bad breakup. That's, That's great. good. That's, That's an amazing, amazing um, situation. Yeah, I was raised that way, just to be honest. And, you know, you know, I never got like, you know, when people, they break up and then they like just like hate, hate each, other. each other. Yeah. And it's like, you guys should have broke up a long time ago. You just staying together and then somebody does something stupid or, or whatever. And, and, you know, just be honest. That's what we were. It was like, hey, you know what? It's 12 years, and I'm like, yeah, this is different. I, I was a little bit different coming back from the Marine Corps. I got to be honest, so I'm not this guy. Uh-huh. That took a lot of time uh, to work through myself. It was very, like, just very just took care of everything. You know, I like, won't pay anything, whatever, but I had no, no emotion, just pff, nothing. So, mm. you know, it wasn't what she signed up for. <laughs> I right. signed up for it. She didn't right. sign up for it. So, um, so yeah, we, we parted ways, but we've been like, like this ever since. Uh, so, you know. That's so, amazing. But that was, uh, but yeah, been single, I don't know, four, five, six years, something like that. Okay. But it's just so much work to be done. And like for me, I live in Miami, Puerto Rico here and on like four planes a month. So who's going to put up with that type of schedule? And I'm an office rat, so I like to stay in the office You'd be late. surprised. You'd nah, be surprised. Because I, I was married um, to a man that was in the military as well, too. And he'd be gone six to eight months out of the year. But it's like, if if the love is there, True. it's there, you know? And no I doubt. just feel like you would, if if you want that in your future, you know, there's someone that, and someone who is willing to deal with that and know what it comes with, then you so I'll, give you, I'll give you another point. Like for me, I say I'm in the office till like seven or eight at night. Um, I'm not, I don't want to have to feel like, oh, I got to hurry up and get home or I'm going to miss You don't this. want I'm it gonna, to be a job. Nope. Yeah. I just want to, I got too much work to do. I'm yeah. focused. I want to do that and not, not have to have that time where I feel bad because I can't be with this person or this person feels bad because they can't be with me, even yeah. though it's fine. Yeah. I just don't want to even have that, yeah. you know, on my radar. Um, yeah. So like I have, you know, a lot of things to accomplish still. And I, that those things are, I don't think warrant. I don't know. You'll never know. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to say no. Yeah. But yeah. Just not right now. I heard that's, why, that. that's why I say about kids. I'm not going to say no, but just not right now. Just not in the next few years. I, and I just not him, in the next week. I tell him all the time. Like I have, I have a, a lot of kids. So I have eight. So I <laughs> How feel many like is with, a lot. They, eight. eight. Enough to play a sport with. With, with subs. So I feel like with him, he's going to be the one that has the twins because we have twin sisters and like, you know, he hasn't had kids. And I'm just like, we have all these fucking kids. And then here he is with no kids. And he's going to be the one that has the twins. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Kids. I'm stuck on that. Like, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, so it's like he, he, there's my, there's my bus. You see that? The tour bus? Oh, that is, oh, yeah. It's the Pineapple Express, Express, Express tour bus. Tour bus oh, going man. around. Oh, man. Yes. Love what do you guys look at it. on those tour buses? So, uh, it's like your typical Hollywood tours, like Beverly Hills Rodeo and all okay. that stuff. You okay. know? That is amazing. What else is Pineapple Express doing around here, yes. man? That's big. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's something we, I approached, um, a guy that, you know, has already had an existing, I think he had of like 12 years, his uh, tour uh, company. So, you know, the bus was not looking great. And I was like, hey, how about I wrap it in pineapple and pay you something per month? 
and just continue on. That way we can start it, you know, hot. You don't have to like try to get clientele and all that right. stuff like that. Right. So it worked out. Oh, that's um, amazing. That's a nice hit. So yeah. Pineapple Express is all over they Hollywood, They are outside, guys. They are guys. all over Hollywood. Literally outside a lot, as man. we speak. Uh, the Montauban Theater, right around the corner, uh -huh. um, here on Vine, a block away from Pineapple Express. Um, they're doing, they started a cannabis movie club. So every oh, wow. Sunday night, they show like sonar movies and then you can actually consume about so weed while watching the yes. movies. It's, it, it's, on the roof, it's on the rooftop. Is that on new? Is that something it's that just... It's like a month ago. Yeah. Oh, wow. Maybe we two months ago. Two months ago. Two months ago. You it's guys awesome. watch movies and smoke weed while watching movies on the rooftop. And that's, a and multi that's where? That's a multi-collab. That's not, not just me. It's LA Normal. It's a lot of other brands. Jeter and all those guys. It's right around the corner in um, the Montauban Theater on top of the Montauban, Montauban. right across the street Montauban. from the Wells Fargo. Okay. Wow. Yeah, we got to check that out. Breakfast Club, oh, Mont fire. Wells Fargo is right across the street. It's cool. So, you know, we're doing that it's around here. Um, also, I did the first uh, consumption um, event at the W. Uh, so fire. Hotel. I, was, mm -hmm. I wanted to work with them, right? But, you know, they have a certain, you know, thing. So mm -hmm. they're like, well, we don't want, we want to work with you guys, but you know, we don't want to smoking. And I'm like, well, that's, that's the whole a purpose. big part of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm like, that's cool because I don't want to change people's habits. If you don't smoke or you never have, I just want to fit into your life. Gotcha. So I was like, something that would be cool for the W was would be to have a cannabis infused cocktail hour, you know, oh, or cocktail nice. night. So we can, you know, we don't have to smoke. You can, um, you, you can infuse cannabis. any mocktail or whatever. So you can take an old fashioned, a Cosmo, whatever. It's no alcohol and it's just infused with THC. So, and in doing that, I, then I added, I added on um, a young black uh, female artist to come display her art and, and sell it, do like a mini art basil for the residences. Wow. So that worked out well. I called a couple um, friends, a couple comedians to kind of like bring more attention to it. Shout out to uh, comedian Shang, Jay Phillips, Flava Flav came through for me, yeah. uh, Patrice from I, uh, As Yet. So these guys came and I just kind of hyped it up a little bit more. And um, it was, it was a great event. And it was like, she sold more more than she would uh, typically as something you would get uh, have alcohol and cocktails, regular right. cocktails, with wow. because you know if you're if you're if you're drinking cannabis or whatever you're consuming, then you start you know getting elevated, euphoric. Yeah. These colors look better than if yeah. you were right. if you were drinking alcohol. Yeah, right. So people right. were like, yeah, we got, I, I, I never buy. You know, art. I, I don't even know where to stick it. I was He's like, like yeah, let me buy, get one of them damn things. Some art. things look good today. <laughs> you know, so uh, so yeah. So I wanted to bring some some sort of experience like that That's to dope. where, and it shows people that you know you can be still discreet and mm -hmm. you can still consume. Especially me, I'm on plane, so there's a nice little additives to add in your drink. That's yeah. fire. And it's like you know discreet. So also, I want to do the next time is um, I want to do a kind of like a bring a cannabis celebrity chef. And do uh, cooking, like show you how to uh, infuse your foods. Mm. Yes. Because another uh, a really young uh, uh, young brother, Daniel from Simply High Extracts, he has ready to go olive oil, already infused, ready to go butter. That's already mm. infused. So you can use you these things to cook. And, yes. yeah, and then you don't have to worry about extracting your stuff. Remember, yes. you know, you'd be like sitting there and making it yes. burn it probably and, you know, whatever. So wow. breaking exactly. your coffee grinder. Big and all moves that. for yes. Pineapple Express. That's amazing. That. That's and you try amazing. to really think outside the box. I mean, we have a great team, um, great creative director, Jen Neville. Um, just, a, you know, a lot of folks, di very diverse um, group of folks we have all, all up the chain of command. So. Just happy to uh, still on two chains, man. That's my yeah. favorite partner. You guys got <laughs> Titty Boy, yeah. Tony, my chains. favorite rapper. Tony, he loves him. All right, yeah. we've talked about cannabis. We've talked about skydiving. We talked about the Marine Corps. For everyone that comes on this show, we play this game. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. It's a very toxic game. Just FYI, you got options. Though. It's you got two options. Games. Okay, one so or the other. The options is bad choices. So it asks you a question. That's pretty much a bad choice. And that you just made answer in your life. Accordingly. We, we play with you too. So it's not just you're on the hot spot. Mm -hmm. Hot seat. We all on the hot spot. Yes. So I just answer like, it, oh. You, Whatever gonna, the card says. So yes or no? Uh, bad choices is going to give you something that you've done in your life. So say, have you had a threesome? And then you would say yes or no because of the choice you made in your life. Okay. And then yes. you could explain why. Because some of these cars are like, yo, I can't just say this and not explain this. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. Why. You're going to want to give an explanation. Exactly. I do it all the time. And okay. then the other game is pick your poison where you're going to have two options, one or the other. So it's going to be you pick your poison out of one or the other. We're going to read you two cards and you're going to read us two cards same yes. way. And we pick one of the options out of the two cards. And you could, again, give your explanation on one of the two cards because this is even more crazier. But this, this, this gives you a chance to not have to 
generate your own question or answer. Like real life. Because it, it, it's, it's either, it's like, let's say, would you rather be deaf or blind? Blind or deaf? Like and it gives you the answer for you. In front of us. Yeah. So it gives <laughs> you the answer. You just have to come up with an explanation. This is probably going to be the most exposed I've ever been in an interview. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. It's a little exposure now. But you won't expose it's us It's fun. Too. It's fun. It's very All fun. Right, let's do it. All right. So which one do you want? Pick your poison or bad choices? Bad choices. All right. Bad choices. So we'll give you the deck, let you pick out uh, three for each of us, and then uh, four for you. And if you have a card so that two says, each uh, to draw ask I don't, I don't card. look at it, right? I just, yeah, you don't look no, at it. No, you don't look at it. Yeah, right. you just hand it to us. You should look at your cards, though. Yeah. Three for you. Three for me. If you have any card that says draw, skip, you could yes, grab so another one. I need one. another one of this. Usually there's some that say draw Thank another you. card. Thank you. 94. I just need one more card. And then you need four. Oops, sorry. Right, sorry. There's yours. Gotcha. And I need four. Ooh, these are some crazy cards. All right. Who wants to go first? I'll start it up. I'll start it up. <laughs> Shit. These are, okay. All right. Go All ahead, right. Zach. First question. Have you ever accidentally texted someone on purpose? No. No, everything you did on purpose. Yeah. Okay. He seems like a very strategic, yeah, yeah, well planned yeah, out person. Strategic with it. Yeah. I can Absolutely. see that. That's the truth right there. Never a never a drunk text or anything like that. Yeah, okay. I could see him being very composed at all times. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, my question is, have you ever hooked up with a close friend's ex? Whew, that's uh, hot. Close friend's ex. Close friend's ex. Nope. No. Nope. I don't think I've all done right, that. It's either. on you. Oh, you get to pick if you want to ask me. So two questions for him, two questions for me. You can pick and choose which, which ones, ones you yeah. want to ask us each. Hmm. Have you ever been cock blocked by a friend? Co yes. Really? Absolutely. You've been cock blocked by friends? Yes. Wow. Absolutely. I've had, I've had, <laughs> when I was single back in the day, I've had girls I feel like like guys that is trying to talk to me and I won't personally like the guy, but because my friend likes the guy, I'll just be like, all right, you know, <laughs> girl, you can have them. There's too many out here, you know? So I feel like with that situation, yes. Yeah. All right. Um, as an adult, have you ever thrown up on someone? No. No. That's just nasty. That's disgusting. No, you gotta be. You gotta be pissy, drunk, drunk or like high, that. or just out of control. Out of control. Out of control. I don't like to not be. That's what that's I'm another saying. reason why I felt like I didn't want to do ayahuasca because I didn't but, have the control. Exactly. And yeah. that's kind of where I was like, Ugh, I don't know, because if I do something and I have no control over it, then how yeah. am I gonna respond and yeah. act? And you know, I'm out of my norm. Yep. So that was kind of my like pullback from yeah. it. But it, like I said, it was great experience. Yeah, I mean, too, like, I never, like, I only had two hangovers in my life. So I just don't like the, I don't, I don't like to feel like I'm being feeling. drunk. Yeah. Yes, Same yeah, it's, it's not a good feeling. And the Same afterwards, way. it's just not it. It's not All right. Good. Have you ever woken up next to someone who you didn't know? Yes, but. There's an explanation. <laughs> It was only for a split second. I didn't recognize. Like oh, you were, you were like, that lit. Who the fuck is yeah, this? I was like, who, I'll just roll over. Like, who, who's that? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I know who you are. Okay, 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 hilarious. Okay. hilarious. Yeah. All right, it's yeah. on you. All right. Uh, have you had sex at work? Sex at work. Okay, so let me. All right, think let, let, let me tell you. Let me. Let me think. He works across the street right here at Cards and Coffee. I work right so here. Right he now, literally like I work here across the street. Literally. Uh, so it is calling. So not out. this yeah. job. Not this job. Hmm. <laughs> really? UPS is my last job. Not UPS. No, no. I was trying to think of every job I've had. But this counts as all sex too, not just full penetration. It's like it could be oral or whatever. So. Just think about that. <laughs> I will say, um, no, not at like a physical establishment that I clock into. However, guys, I have done OnlyFans, so that's <laughs> that's sex at work, right? That's sex at work. I am. Wait, weak. you've done OnlyFans? I, I've, I've, I've been on. I am on OnlyFans. <laughs> he outside. <laughs> so, he said, I, I, well, I, I am. I am on OnlyFans. <laughs> he said, so, hit the link hey. in the bio. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is my first time actually even saying that out loud. But I'm not gonna lie, you guys asked me the question. Dad is gonna at work. kill him. I'm just letting you know. Oh, wow. All right. Exposure. Moving forward, I just exposed myself. Yes. It is All right. What it is. Um, have you ever sent an embarrassing text to the wrong person? That was no. similar to the question you had. Yeah. No. Yeah, it was kind of like almost the same. Yeah. That was my last one. My last one to you is a little spicy. <laughs> Would you watch your parents have sex for $1 million? Yes. $1 million, no doubt. Easy. That's fine. Why? Oh, I'll be like, Not on tape in person. I mean, it'd be tough, but I'll get through it. <laughs> I'll get through he's it. Gonna, he's going to get the Part bag Part of that money now. is going to go to therapy, but I'll get through it. You know, this is, this is a long definitely, game. Definitely, definitely like a uh, mental illness, post-traumatic. Cool. Cool, you talk about PTSD. That's a PTSD yeah, that's, situation. That's something, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Do I have one more? Oh, no, I have two? Yes. You got two more, one each. All right. I feel like every time we do this, I get tough questions. Have you ever been denied? In no, I don't have good questions. Actually. I got, I, got <laughs> I don't have juicy ones. Anyway. <laughs> have you ever been denied into a nightclub? No. I wouldn't think so. No. <laughs> she ain't got no problems getting into the club. No, Ooh. no, Female, I walk. I literally walk. I, I, come to the back. I literally walk like past the whole line and I'm like, hi. <laughs> and no, that's she, it. And it's just like she literally hi. like it's embarrassing sometimes time. coming to the All club I had to do her. was say hi. <laughs> she she just walks up to the line and she's like, oh, no, we're not. I'm like a line. Here. Come on, we're gonna go yeah, to the front. We're gonna see who's not just you. Right now. Yeah, also, no, we. Yeah, I'm, one, I'm I'm not the type to just go into the club by myself. No, yeah. I'm bringing like a whole heads. entourage of people with me, and I'll be the one to be like, hi, we're trying to get in the club, yeah. work at a table, whatever it is. But I'm not waiting in this line. Like, absolutely All not. 15 of us are cutting the yeah. whole line and it just looks terrible. Yeah. But hey, and I'll, I'll just look at the club turned up right after that. <laughs> Fuck y'all, y'all waiting. I'm not I don't a care what club it is and I'm, who's inside the club. I'm not a clubber. Never been. Um, <laughs> you know what? I don't dance. I don't dance. I literally just sit post, in the club you post up. and yeah, I Bob post up. Security. Diddy bop. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> I never, no, I never go. I, I just haven't never. Been, like when I, I probably was clubbing like when I was 20, 21 years old. I'm 35 now. So I'm like in the house with my kids and working yeah. otherwise, unless it's like one of my girls' birthdays or, or something along those lines. But I'm a dinner type of person now. Like I like to go to dinners and like enjoy my friends at dinners. But if we had a club situation, I'm walking. Then up to you the front. Get yeah. I'm walking up to the front, guys. Sorry, not sorry, but I'm doing it. I just can't stand in line. We're in heels. Like, absolutely not. That absolutely line is like not. ridiculous <laughs> all the time. Every club, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I'm bougie now to the point where I don't even like lines anymore. Just, I don't sit in lines with my sister. I ain't sitting in lines with y'all no more. <laughs> I done got to that point. All last right. question. Last yes. question. Oh, last Let's question. get it to you, sir. Would you tell a mother that her baby was ugly for 200 bucks? $200? Ugh. Do I know the mom? Or she's just some random lady that I'm like, Oof. random, random lady. Yeah, let's do it. Your baby ugly. <laughs> he, and I'm gonna he'll keep say, walking just like that. He'll Man, say, that ugly. yeah, there was Dang, no simulation. You gotta sit there and take the slap. <laughs> tough, tough crowd. You can crowd. just keep it moving, right? <laughs> yeah. You can just say your baby's ugly and just move before <laughs> she can. I gotta just deal with that baby with her purse, like, <laughs> like, oh, That good. was so rude. <laughs> this roof Jeez, for two hundred dollars. Dinner's on me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we could take you and your ugly baby. See, I would just split it. You know, split it. Yeah, definitely. So here's hundred bucks. It's a, it's a gig. It's a Hopefully, that could help your baby get a little bit more. Ooh, Terrible. Huh? That's the, now you're stretching. Uh, now, now you're stretching it. Hundred dollars, make it go long. Hide your babies from this dude. <laughs> exactly. So tell everybody where they can find you. What else you guys got going on? What's coming up? All that great stuff. Uh, so you can find me, uh, CEO of Cannabis, on all platforms. Uh, Pineapple CEO Express Hollywood, and uh, if you want it delivered. Uh, Pineapple Express delivers. So, or you can just go to pineappleexpress.com and we take all forms of credit, people, debit, all those good things. We we're even the first ones to do Apple Pay. Yeah. Uh, so, um, in delivery, it's uh, as far north as Santa Clarita, down Long Beach, over to Pasadena and the west side. Uh, under little as 30 minutes in some some cases up to an hour and a half. So, not so bad. It's amazing. Better than you a guys, cable company. Do you guys deliver to Glendora? I think I think we do, or we're about to put a hub somewhere near there. Oh, okay. Oh, so nice. you guys are going closer to inland more too with it. Yeah, we're trying to do that. Also, we have two more that's coming online by the end of this year. We're going to be the first one in Brentwood, uh, nice. and also um, next to SoFi. 
um, USC, the next to USC and all that. That's nice. Uh, then we should hopefully have three more online next year. Um, so we're just going to start, you know, Popping doing up. all those things. And this, these are all, by the way, with That's social amazing. equity uh, partners. So oh. these are for, you know, folks that uh, were disenfranchised or got, you know, arrested or for some sort of cannabis offense. And now they're awarded licenses. And instead of poaching these folks and creating this incubator to where, you know, these folks can uh, not just pass off your, and a lot of companies will just try to steal their license basically right. and give them a passive income. But I want them involved as much as you can. I'm an educator. So I'm like, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, folks who, who have these licenses are not educated just because of the way they grew up or whatever, yeah. whatever situation. So I like to teach, you know, uh, management courses to these guys um, so they can talk intelligently about their projects. It's their, it's their thing. You know, we're just a partner, um, but it's, they're, they're the reason why we got the store in the first place. So you really got to do that for these folks. And that's why a lot of us, a lot of come, uh, come to us. Um, and most of these are run by the opposite color. So you feel a little more comfortable here because I'm going like to do the right that. thing. That's, like that's that. just all I know how to do. So, so that's us. And, um, and also I think, uh, my shout out to Barbara Sanchez, Barbara Sanchez, Yay. my publicist. Thank you so much, um, She's for setting amazing. this up, meeting you guys. She did want me to talk about some things we're getting into the future. So I'm going to get back into, uh, acting just to try to, um, do some things and work with some folks, uh, plug pineapple in a little bit. I'd like to okay. see this represented on some shows and things like that. That's so amazing. I am SAG. So I'm going to use that to, you know, get back in these things. Yeah. I was the first, I was the first Ikea interracial USA commercial. I ran for like a couple of years. That was oh, really nice. great. Um, shout out to Priya Ferguson as well from stranger things. She played my daughter on that, on that. Uh, I worked with the rock, uh, once that was a great experience. Tony Horton. Remember the beach? Beachbody P90X. Uh -huh. uh -huh. yeah, I was one yeah, of the original yeah. guys in the video oh, okay. back in the wow. day. So, uh, so yeah. So now I just gotta, you know, get things going again. That's yeah, all going. Absolutely, again. I love you to already hear. Already had the ball rolling. He got things going on, y'all. And he make sure you to. guys absolutely make sure you guys tune in to all things Pineapple Express. Sean Cradle, his acting career is about to jump back into it, yeah. and and everything else that he has going on. Tune into at. CEO of Cannabis, that correct? Is correct. On so. all platforms. And that is it for Tele Talks. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Oh, thank you.